Good morning and welcome to this segment of the program. So good to come your way. I am Inuagata Dosahai, and I'm so grateful to God this morning, grateful to the management of independent television, grateful to the team and you know, staff members of independent television. Why? It's my 12th year on screen. My 12th year on screen, celebrating my 12 years anniversary on screen, handling this uh, value adding segment, adding color to your day every day since the last 12 years. The month of February is a month I always celebrate my presentation anniversary, and this month of February happened to be my 12th year you know, uh, anniversary. Won't you say congratulations to me? Yes, I know you are saying that, and I heard it very well. Thank you very much. And today we are going to be looking at how team leaders discourage team members. In other words, how team leaders set up their teams to fail. And one of those will is through, you know, disrespectful disposition towards team members. Now, there are some team members that, if you actually look at it, you know, their performance failure could be as a result of their own fault. You know, some team members outrightly are just incompetent. While you also have some team members that wouldn't just follow instructions. Now, these people, as a result of this kind of disposition, they could possibly be responsible for performance failure. But there are also some below performance expectation. I mean, there are also some you know, uh, uh, below you know, average uh, performance by some team members that is not their fault. It's a result of the fault of the team leaders. And one of the ways, like I've mentioned, that team leaders contribute to this is through disrespectful disposition to these team members. You know, you see the way some team leaders talk to some team members, it just demoralizes them. It, 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 it demotivates them. And some of this uh, way they express this uh, disrespectful dis disposition is by just, you know, insulting them in the presence of customers. This I have seen with my eyes. You go to some places to make purchases, to buy some things, or to engage a service. You see the director or the manager of that place in the presence of, you know, lots of customers just calling, you know, the, 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 the staff, the receptionist, the sales boy, the sales girl, you know, all sorts of names. I've heard somebody telling the staff, you are a thief. In Pigeon English parlance, actually, you be thief, you be thief, you be thief. You know, and all this kind of, you know, disrespectful disposition towards uh, team members demotivates the team member. It demoralizes them. And as a boss, as a manager, you don't want to have demotivated and demoralized employees interfacing with your customers. This will not help your business. The atmosphere has already been polluted from the very beginning by the way you treat the team member, by the way you treat your staff. It's so important you take this seriously for the good of your business, for your own good as the boss, as the manager, as the HOD, as the team head. Now, the reason you dispense respect to your team members, to your employees, it's not because of their academic qualification. It's not because of, you know, they are having master's degree, having PhD. It's not because of the kind of family background they came from. Probably they are from royal families. No, you don't respect people because of their academic qualification. You don't do so because of their family background. You don't do so because of their gender. You respect them for being human beings. And you have to do everything possible as a boss, as a manager, to make sure that you do not rip your staff of their human dignity. If you rip your staff of their human dignity, it's going to negatively, negatively ripple on your business. The kind of atmosphere the customers should be meeting will not be the type that will make them want to come back for repeated patronage. So you need to watch this, so important. Avoid being disrespectful to your team members avoid disrespectful disposition to your staff, to your employees. Another approach, another way that some team leaders also discourages their team members and therefore, therefore or thereby setting the system for failure, setting the team for failure, is by too much micromanaging. Too much micromanaging. You don't give the staff, the team member, breathing space on the job responsibilities that you have assigned to them. 
for every tax, for every job, for every assignment you have assigned to them, you are always over supervising them. You are always wanting them to touch base with you for every action, for every decision. This will not help the confidence of such team member. It will not help their self, it will not help their self-esteem. It will not help their self-confidence. Now, you have the responsibility to mentor them. You have the responsibility to coach them. Now, when you look at the game of soccer, football, after the coach has taken the, you know, the footballers, the team members through training, when the game is to be played, the coach doesn't get into the feet to play it with them. He's on the sideline, giving them free hand to play. And as they are playing, during halftime, is when, you know, when there is need for one or two corrections, he chip in the corrections, and they go back to play. And as a result, the team members, the players, are building confidence. This should be the same strategy you should employ as a team leader. You have time that you teach them. You have time that you mentor them. You have time that you coach them. And then give them free hand to practice what you have taught them. This is so important. It will help them build confidence. It will help them build self-esteem. And at the end of the day, it will now help you achieve better results as a team head, as a boss, as a manager, or as a CEO. This is just so critical. Then another way that team leaders set up their team to fail or set up the system to fail is through bias conflict resolution. Two team members are having issues. You know, they are having conflict. They are having disagreement. And it's brought to your table as a HOD, as a manager, as a general manager, or as a CEO to resolve. And then you resolve the issue against the offended. You resolve the issue in favor of the offender. Do you know what you are doing to your system or to, team, to the team, to the department? You are just destroying the department with your own hands. Now, you are doing so probably because of an affinity you have with the offender. You are doing so because of something you might be benefiting or you intend to benefit you know, from the offender. Probably his father or her father is a wealthy person. Probably his father or relation or uncle or he or she knows one or two persons that you feel can help the system achieve uh, uh, better results. And now the particular person is having issues with his or her colleague. And in resolving the issue, you are resolving that issue against that person that is the offender. Resolving it against the offended. With that, you are going to set up, you are already setting up the system to fail. You are already using your own hands to destroy the system. And so this should be avoided. It's so important. I strongly believe that profound value have been added to you today. Today, remember, I'm celebrating my 12th year anniversary on screen. And strongly believe, I strongly believe that value has been added to you. And I know you would love to reach me as you have been doing. And my phone number is plus 234 for those outside Nigeria, plus 234 I take it again, plus 234 And the second number, plus 234 529 For those of us in Nigeria, you know how to just dial the number instantly. Remove the plus 234 and then you go straight ahead, 080. And then reach me, let's discuss and let's see how we can take things to the next level for you. My name is Inuarata Nosahai. Your day is so blessed. Thank you.